Good to see so many out this morning. Amen. Praise God. I mean, truly, how many knows it's no secret what God can do? Amen. My goodness, what He's done for others. <laughs> he's not a respected person. He loves each and every one, and He'll do the same for you. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles and you love to read the Scripture, turn over to 2 Corinthians, if you would. Chapter 4. Oh, yeah. I'll give you a moment to find it. 2 Corinthians, chapter 4. We're going to read a couple of verses, starting with verse number 7. Yeah. When you find it, say amen. Amen. <coughs> it says in verse 7, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, yeah. that the excellency of the power may be of God, oh, God. and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Uh, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Uh, are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Praise God. Let's have everyone stand and go for the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, again for the opportunity to stand, God, and preach your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for each one that's come out, Lord. God, we ask, Lord, that the anointing uh, will come upon us, Lord, this morning, God. Move up and down these aisles, God. Lord, touch the hearts of each one here and the ears to hear, God, this morning. Uh, bring us, Lord, to that place, God, where we can hear you. Uh, God, that we'll obey you, God. Lord, that when it is sick this morning, that you would touch them, their bodies, God, and, and make them better, God. Uh, God, those who are, God, are sick and sin, God. Lord, that you would re reach into their heart, God, and speak to them this morning, that they give their lives to you. God, those who are at home and couldn't make it this morning, God, we ask you, Lord, to be with them. Put your arms around them, Lord, and love them, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name, and amen. amen. Praise God, you may be seated. Excuse me while I take my dignity off here. <clears throat> How many knows that uh, God is awesome? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Truly he is. Verse number 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Amen. Mm -hmm. How many knows that you live in an earthen vessel this morning? Yes. I mean, you do. And you know what? You leak. That's true. I mean, if we live long enough in this old building, trust me, uh, one of these days it's going to break down and, and like mine. And praise God. And you know what? Uh, it's going to start leaking. I mean, I listen, because we live in this earthen vessel, and when the leaks come in this old building, uh, that means that your joy sometimes is going to leak out. Uh, amen. Listen, that means that sometimes, uh, praise God, your praise is going to leak out. Uh, glory to God. Uh, I'm talking about we're living in a house of clay, and I'm looking forward to that promise of God. Listen, he said that when I was born again, he said that one day he's going to give me a brand new body. Praise God. One that's never going to get sick. One that's never going to get old. Praise God. is going to live forever. It's going to be just like him. We're going to be cute. <laughs> Amen. Just like the pastor. Amen. Just like the Lord. Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. The Bible goes on and says in verse number 8, uh, we are perplexed, uh, but we are not in despair. Listen, folks, that that means, come on. we're not without hope. Uh, yeah. Glory to God, that means uh, I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Amen. 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 Praise God. Listen, folks, it's God who's going to see you and I through. Amen. Praise God. Listen, uh, it's not the doctor who's going to see you through. Uh, it's not your employer who's going to see you through. Uh, it's Jesus that's going to take you through. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And it goes on in verse number 9 and says, uh, you, uh, says uh, you may be perplexed, but not forsaken. Yeah. Uh, praise God, you may be cast down, yeah. but not destroyed. Ooh. Listen, my friend, Jesus said he'd stick closer than a brother. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God that he would never leave us. Glory. Amen. More than conquer. My Lord, my God, this morning I, I want to preach on the subject, absolute worst day. Absolute worst day. Listen, friends, uh, as I look down through the canyon of time, uh, I look out and I see old Paul and Silas there. Listen, uh, uh, when they came down to Philippi, that coastal city there, on their second missionary journey. Uh, now I know what we're teaching in, in the book of Acts, and we just covered the first missionary journey, and, and we're getting to the second one in a couple weeks. Yes. So we'll give you a little preview here. Glory to God. Listen, uh, one of the chief parts of Macedonia there, uh, it was a trade marketplace. It was a place of commerce. 
It was a place uh, to do business. It was a place where many people came in. Uh, glory to God. And when they got down there to Philippi, Paul and Silas went to walking around, praise God, and they, they began to start teaching and preaching and praying. Uh, glory to God, you know. And I believe it was on a Sabbath day that they went on down uh, uh, to the riverside down there and they seen this little group of women there. Uh, glory to God. Listen, uh, and they were having a prayer meeting down there. And one of them's name was Lydia. Uh, she was a well-to-do uh, Jewish, uh, uh, not Jewish, but a, pros a Jewish proselyte. She was well-to-do because she was a seller of purple, which was very expensive. She was from the city of Tyre, and she loved uh, uh, the Lord, and she loved to worship Him, and she did so with all of her heart. But like I said, she was a Jewish proselyte. And, and there she heard the gospel message of, of Paul when he began to preach the gospel message. How many know the gospel message will do one of two things? It'll bring you to God, or it'll harden your heart. Yeah. Listen, this, this message <laughs> pricked her heart. It opened her heart to the Lord and she was born again on that day. Praise God. And, and there they were, praising and worshiping God. And I mean, uh, and, uh, the meetings continued. Uh, and Paul of Silas was preaching for many days. Uh, and one day, uh, he looked around uh, and he seen this witch following him there. Oh, listen, and she had a spirit, uh, listen, that would choke out the Word of God. I mean, uh, a spirit that would, would uh, I mean, have drive out all the good things that the Lord had for him. Uh, but listen, uh, uh, listen, if the enemy knows uh, that he can't destroy you, he'll want to join up with you. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, if he knows he can't kill you or get rid of you, then he will try to pretend that he's your best friend. Yeah. He will, and if you try to deceive all those people around you, praise God that knows you, that you've done joint forces with the devil. And you say, well, how can that be? Well, listen, I mean, people are watching your life. And if you're hanging out with the wrong people, they think that you've got done changed and hanging out to the devil now. You're going to the same place as the rest of the world. That is not what we're supposed to be doing. Listen. He tries to pretend, uh, it says, to be that. I mean, uh, these men were willing uh, uh, to do anything they could uh, to distort the gospel message. Uh, uh, listen, uh, this woman was a fortune teller. She was a soothsayer. Uh, I mean, she was a poem reader. Uh, and, and listen, uh, how many knows that there are some folks that just can't leave the house? Uh, I mean, when they get out of the bed, first thing they got to do is uh, read their horoscope. And Landers. Uh, yeah, they, they want to read it and see what Ann Landers has got to say. How I many knows Ann Landers can't even take care of herself? She just passed away. But listen, uh, my friend, uh, you know, they, they just got to read the, the horoscope so they can find out how they're going to feel. Somebody said, well, do you know what this woman was saying, though? Uh, uh, sure, uh, just what you and I would love to hear. Uh, praise God that these men are great men of God. I mean, I mean, these men will show you the way of salvation. Uh, so this woman that was possessed uh, of this demon, that demon was uh, had her so bound that uh, this demon power that did great, strange, uh, mysterious things uh, would happen. This demon had uh, uh, power over this entire place. Listen, church, there are demonic powers over cities today. Amen? Amen. And when we don't realize the influence that they have uh, over our officials and the people, uh, praise God. But listen, church, uh, there are demon forces there, but I'm telling you, this is a spiritual warfare that you and I are in this morning, uh, and God has given us victory over them, and we are not backing down, we are not crawling in a corner somewhere, and we're not going to bow down to this world system. Uh, we're not going to join in league with them either, and we're not joining hands with the devil. Amen? Amen. Amen. But in the name of Jesus, we're standing strong in, and the power and anointing of God. Praise God. Well, after a few days had gone by, 
And this woman had been following him and doing all these things. Paul turns around and he said, I command you in the name of Christ to come out. And he cast that demon out. Praise God. The Bible said that he came out the very same day. Amen. Glory. And when our masters, I mean, they saw that the hope of all their gain was taken from them. There's no more money coming in. It's all dried up. Praise God. They said, why, uh, listen, she can't even tell fortunes anymore. She can't read uh, the poems anymore. They got so mad, they caught Paul and Silas, and they brought him before the magistrates. Uh, listen, that's the sheriff in the marketplace there. Listen, and, and they brought there uh, there because of the money had stopped. And, and so, so and, and they begin to tell the magistrates there, he said, listen, uh, these men brought brought." Uh, uh, so much problems to our city. These men being Jewish people do trouble us and, and they're teaching customs uh, which is unlawful uh, for us to receive, neither to observe, because we're Romans. We can't do that. And the Bible says that they were stripped of their clothing. Uh, I mean, these men were insulted. Uh, they were humiliated before the whole world. Uh, and then they were beaten. I mean, they weren't just beaten uh, uh, by anybody, but they were beaten by professional men. Men that knew how to inflict pain upon you. Men that would take those leather straps and, and they would beat you unmercifully. A lesson. And then they took them to jail. Now I'm not talking about jails like we have today. Where we have TVs and computers and video games and libraries and gymnasiums. No, we didn't have them kind of jails back then. But, but they were dark and cold and wet. Infested with rats. And, and they smelled a lot too. My Lord. That's not a place that you want to go to. Uh, listen, uh, well, they told the jailer, he said, now listen, uh, uh, you're going to have to lock these men up. I mean, uh, we don't want it, uh, uh, anything to happen to these men. Uh, uh, you've got to get them because there's just something about these Jesus people that they have a way of, uh, of getting out. And listen, as a matter of fact, uh, their leader was that man called Jesus. Uh, uh, listen, uh, even, even the Romans uh, had to deal with him. Uh, and, and they had him crucified. Uh, and they put him in a tomb. They sealed it up. And they had put guards around it. Uh, but something happened. Because on that third day, the storm, stone was rolled away. And he got out. Yeah. I mean, I said he got out. How many knows that he got out? Praise God. Death couldn't hold him. The power of darkness could, couldn't keep him. Uh, praise God. Well, you know what? They said, these men are Jesus people. These are Jesus praisers here. Uh, and I want you to put them in, in maximum security. Uh, I want you to go overboard on these men. Uh, but not only put them in maximum security, he said, I want you to put their feet in stocks. I mean, they ain't going nowhere. Listen, uh, uh, so they brought them into the maximum security, into the very innermost part of the jail there. Uh, listen, uh, now when the Romans would put your feet in stocks, uh, they would stretch your legs as far apart as they possibly could until you were screaming in pain. I mean, with their feet spread as far as they could get them, then they fastened their feet uh, into these stocks. And that's where they had to stay. Uh, listen, they stripped them of their clothes. Uh, their blood's running down their backs. Uh, the their blood streaming down their legs and their arms. Uh, and so now their feet are stalked. Their, their, their body's in pain. And everything's been taken away from them. Now listen, their church is gone. Their family's gone. Their friends are gone. Their clothes are gone. Their food is gone. The house is gone. Everything is gone. Everything is gone, gone, gone. Uh, uh, do you hear what I'm saying? Everything is gone. But the Bible says, at midnight. Everyone say at midnight. At midnight. At midnight. Listen, it's the absolute worst day, time of the, uh, uh, the, there is. The darkest time of the night. Uh, my friend, listen, the uh, uh, worst is going to be, it can't get any worse than this. It, it can't get any worse than what I'm experiencing right now. I mean, listen, my family's been removed. My clothes have been removed. Uh, my body's bleeding. The blood's running down my, my face. And my family's not with me. The church is not with me. My friends are not with me. Nobody around. Yeah. And now my feet they're in stocks, and, and I'm in severe pain. But my friend, this morning, I want you to know that the worst thing the Roman government did to Paul and Silas wasn't beating them. The worst thing that they did to them wasn't stripping them of their clothes. 
The worst thing that they, they did uh, uh, to them uh, wasn't putting their feet in the stocks. Uh, it wasn't the worst thing that they did locking them up in maximum security. Uh, but I want you to know this morning, the very worst thing that they did to Paul and Silas was putting those two boys uh, together. <laughs> Listen, because the Bible says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I will be in the midst. Amen. Praise God. And if two or three agree and touch any one thing, it shall be done. Amen. Amen. Glory. Listen, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Glory to God. I said joy cometh in the morning. Listen, God's going to have a praise. God's going to have a worship. And God's going to have a shout. And praise God. Let's give the Lord a big hand this morning. You may ask, well, what does this story have to do with me? What does this story have to do with the church? Uh, why did God even put that in the scriptures? Uh, why are we reading it this morning? Uh, why are we listening to it? Uh, why, why are we shouting about it? What, what's it all about? What's this there for? My friend, it's in there because the absolute worst day. I mean, when you've been when you've been stripped of your clothes, when you've been put in uh, in maximum security, and there's no organ to play. Uh, listen, there's no drum to beat upon. Uh, there's no pad of pews to sit upon. There's no chandeliers to give you any light. Uh, listen, there's no snakes around to shake your hand. Uh, there's nobody to preach you up. There's nobody to pump you up. There's nobody to pat you on the back. Listen, there's nobody there to encourage you. That's right. Your encouragers are gone. I mean, your church is gone, your family is gone, your food's gone, your shelter's gone, everything's gone. Your absolute worst day. But church, listen, you're not there yet. We've not suffered like they did back no. then. We haven't come there. You think that your absolute worst day, listen, is when the preacher went to shake hands and, and he skipped over you. I mean, you think that's the worst day when you came into the church parking lot and somebody already had your spot. I mean, the worst after the day is when you come into the house of God and somebody took your seat. Uh, uh, glory, listen, uh, you think your worst day is when somebody uh, said something bad about you and, and has bloomed uh, doom and despair on me. Oh, uh, uh, listen, but one day, you know what? You'll grow up and realize that this is not the love boat on the way to paradise, that this is a battleship, my friend. Uh, listen, uh, and that we're in the Lord's army, Praise God. It's time to stand up and start fighting. And praise God. Listen. Uh, and God is going to give us the victory. Amen. I'm Amen. fighting against the devil. How about you? Uh, I'm fighting against hell this morning. Uh, I, and you know something? I cannot be a coward. I cannot be a baby anymore. I've got to stand up in, in the victory that overcomes the world. How about you? My Lord and my God. Well, listen. My friend, the worst day of your life. Isn't the day that the song service didn't go right? I mean, you might have had some of those. I've had some of those. Listen, the worst day of your life uh, isn't the day you just... Uh, listen, it, nothing went right. Nothing went like it should go. Uh, maybe you just, when you got out of bed, things just went wrong from the get-go. Uh, and you didn't get that first cup of coffee. Uh, uh, listen, uh, and uh, all you can do now is just grumble and complain because nothing's going right. Uh, and you're one of those people that everything has to be just so-so. But praise God, you know something. Uh, we need to get the... Uh, we, need, we need to... Uh, Start getting ourselves uh, uh, focused on God and not for ourselves. Uh, listen, it's time to grow up and, and, and repent and get right with God. Amen. Yeah. You want to talk about having one of those worst days? Well, when it feels like your legs are being stretched from the north to the south, and that's a long way. Uh, listen, uh, and, and the pain's rocking your body, and your body is stripped uh, uh, of all of its clothing. Uh, listen, and, and your food's gone, your family's gone, and, and there's nothing else left. Uh, you're on your way, my friend. Listen, now you are on your way. Listen, church, uh, the absolute worst day for a born-again child of God is a praise day. I mean, I said a praise day. When you don't have a home, uh, you've got to give God a praise. When you don't have food, you've got to praise Him. When you don't have clothes uh, put on your back, you need to praise Him. Uh, listen, when you can't pay your bills, you need to praise Him. Uh, when you don't know how God's going to work it out, you need to praise Him. Praise God. Listen, church, uh, when you start praising God, uh, God's going to come down and you start to move. Yes. Amen. You see, it's yeah. not about us. It's about Him. Bible said we may be perplexed, 
That means confused. How many of you are going to be confused? Anybody? We are not in despair, but praise God, that means we're not without hope. That means I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Well, praise God. Listen, folks. I'm telling you what. Along about midnight, I can hear old Paul look over at Silas. And he says, Silas, you feel like praying? And he says, well, Paul, I, I don't feel much like, like it, but, you know, I'll pray with you. Glory to God. And so they prayed, the Bible said. <laughs> and, and then he said, would, would you like to sing? Uh, now, wait a minute, Paul. Sing? Uh, I mean, you know, uh, I'm hurting. I'm in pain. It's, it is dark and I'm cold and everything, you know. And our feet are in stocks here. We're locked out in this jailhouse here. Uh, but you know, I want you to know that Paul, uh, praise God, he started out singing lead, maybe. Uh, and it wasn't too long a silence by a, a sung tenor. Uh, but it was like the Holy Ghost came in and began to sing the bass. Uh, praise God. And I'll tell you what, when that trio, uh, praise the able God, when they got together and began to sing, that jailhouse uh, began to rock. Amen. Glory to God. Paul and Silas began to sing praises unto God. And, and listen, they begin to praise my Lord and Savior. Those, the Bible says that the prisoners heard them. The ones who deserve to be in there. The sinner people, mind you. Listen, uh, oh church, let me tell you uh, what's going to happen when you give a, a praise unto God. When you don't have anything else left. Uh, praise God, when your home is tore up uh, and your husband is a, as mean as the devil. Uh, uh, or your wife is the one that's as mean as the devil. Sometimes it works that way too. Uh, and your children are all drugged up and, and you're all set. And, and listen, you've got nothing left but a praise. Oh, when you haven't got anything but a praise, hallelujah, then there's not going to be anything that's going to move them. You see, right. all your tears and weeping and moaning and complaining, uh, that, that's not going to move them. All your arguing, that's going to move, not going to move them. They're only not going to be moved by anything, but when they see you praising God, yeah. oh, listen, uh, there's going to have to be an attitude change. Now listen, when the prisoners heard them singing and praising God, they felt the power of God in that place. Uh, praise God. And God shook that place. Uh, and an earthquake began to, to move. Uh, and everybody's bands fell off. Everybody got free. I said everybody's bands uh, fell off. Uh, that jailhouse, it, it began to shake uh, on its foundation. Uh, and the very stocks were loose. And, and the doors were open. And the prison bars were open. And that jailer, who, who was sitting on the outside there, and was sound asleep. But oh, listen, when that earthquake starts shaking that place, uh, he felt the trembling begin to move. Uh, he looked down and he seen the door was open there. Uh, listen, he said, uh, they got away uh, and, and, and they're going to come now uh, and they're going to take my life. Uh, listen, so he grabbed a hold of his sword there, uh, about to kill himself. Listen, uh, this was the absolute worst day of his life. Amen. Uh, listen, praise God. Paul said, do yourself no harm, uh, that we are all still here. And that Philippian jailer, he ran uh, in there and he brought them out. And he fell down at their feet uh, and he said, what must I do to be saved? Uh, praise God. You know, uh, and Paul didn't say, well, you got to believe on the pastor. you got to believe on the deacon. you got to believe on the governor. you got to believe on this and that. Praise God. Uh, uh, no, they said, you got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. 1631. And thou shalt be saved and, and thy whole house. Hallelujah. Listen. Uh, and the Bible said that same night. I mean, the jailer took them uh, to his house with him. Uh, and, and every member of his household heard uh, the gospel message. They believed, uh, was saved, and was baptized. Uh, and afterwards, they washed their stripes. And this morning, my friend, God is a delivering God. Amen. Yes, He is. I mean, when you have lost everything and you have nothing else to do, I praise God, no place else that you can go, start praising God. I mean, it'll turn your worst day into the greatest day that you ever will have. Amen. Praise God. Let's everyone stand.